Hello everyone and welcome in. With 2023 ended and my upcoming runs taking way longer than intended, it felt like a good time to review all the existing out-of-the-box runs. I'll be ranking each in terms of difficulty starting with the easiest. These are my personal takes on which runs are most difficult, however some positions are quite a gray area. My ranking is definitely biased, so feel free to disagree with me in the comments. Since I try to only take on runs that haven't been done, all of them tend to rank on the more difficult side, so classifying one as the easiest is a bit difficult. That said, I do think that number one would be... Can you beat Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution without monster cards? Honestly, I mostly ran this one because of the you've activated my trap beam, if you couldn't tell. I figured if you had access to every card in the books, winning duels was surely possible, which is why I chose a game where we'd start with limited access. While grinding out the cards for the first deck by losing repeatedly was tedious, I wouldn't say it ranks very high on the list. There were some duelists like Dennis McPhil that were quite difficult, but ultimately the AI just doesn't play smartly around things like magic cylinders. Can you beat Kirby Air Ride without eating enemies? I really wanted to do a Kirby challenge, but it felt like all of them had already been done. However, there was one game from my childhood that had little to no challenges around it, and that was Kirby Air Ride. And what better type of challenge for a Kirby game than deleting the mechanic that makes Kirby Kirby? I actually wasn't expecting the time attacks to be the difficult checkboxes either, so it turned out to be a better run than I expected. Despite the fun factor, in terms of sheer difficulty, it falls a lot lower on the list. Can you beat Pokemon Legends Arceus with only status moves? Status only runs have been done before, and when I first had this idea, it seemed like one I could knock out quickly. However, once I learned that the only damaging status I could inflict was poison, I realized this wouldn't be a quick run. Between having multiple fights matching me up against poison or still types, and the agile and strong style mechanic, this one turned out to take a lot of grinding. But in my view, being forced to level is not the same as difficulty. The biggest hurdle was the optional post-game Volo fight, but ultimately it just didn't take as much strategizing as the other stuff on the list. Can you beat Thymesia like a true Plague Doctor? Doing this run up front, I fully expected it not to be my largest video. However, the charm of the game made me really want to run it despite that fact. All in all, beating a Souls game without being able to dodge or block is about what you'd expect. In particular, defeating the first boss was a huge hurdle, but once past Odor, I'd say the difficulty stays fairly consistent. This run was probably tougher than it seemed like from the way that I presented it. I also got quite used to relying on the Hammer Plague weapon, and I think this one carried me a lot more than I expected up front. Can you beat Yoshi's Island without eggs? Let me start by saying that if I had known this run had been attempted before I started it, I probably wouldn't have done it. I didn't actually find out that someone else had tried it until I was mostly through, and I made it a point to not check their strats once I found out. One detail I didn't really focus on is that while a lot of stages can be completed normally without eggs, that doesn't change the fact that not dealing with enemies does make it harder to clear. Additionally, we only make it four stages in before hitting a major roadblock. Every new stage felt like a coin flip on whether we'd hit a major hurdle or not. While I did reference a lot of discoveries from the speedrunning community, I kept finding that not having eggs forced me to adapt skips or tactics a bit differently than they're normally used. Overall, I feel both the routing and execution of this run provided a good level of difficulty. Can you beat Kingdom Hearts 3 with only magic? I knew ahead of time that someone had already done this on a lower difficulty, but I felt doing it on critical mode made a big enough difference that I undertook it anyway. See, critical mode reduces Sora's max MP and makes the recharge time longer. Combo that with some pro codes and more difficult enemies and you'll start sweating even in the early areas. The other thing that made this one particularly difficult was not being able to block, meaning anything that had combo attacks became way more threatening. If you skip to the end of this one, you'll probably see the final build which makes it seem trivial, but the entire build up to acquire that build really does provide a difficult experience. Especially since some fights require the player to use other characters which effectively removes your build and the Aqua fight in particular gave a taste of what the DLC might look like. Overall, I found this run to be a sweet spot in terms of difficulty, and getting the final build with an endless cast loop feels ultra rewarding. Can you beat every shrine in Tears of the Kingdom without abilities? Obviously, it was inspired by the success of my No Sheikah Slate run, so I figured I'd tackle this one early after release. This turned out to be both a blessing and a curse. I wound up needing an infinite height glitch that later got patched, but at the same time glitches in the game were just starting to be found. 
I think a lot of the strats and ideas I created for No Sheikah Slate helped in making a good portion of this run easier than it should have been, especially since I was so used to working with Octobaloons already. That said, the shrines that were not easy were very difficult, and shrines like Mayasi in particular did not spark any joy. Both the Korok Forest and the Great Sky Island were sections I underestimated before starting this run and caused a lot of issues with trying to complete them. When I first started, I actually had multiple people reach out to say that this was impossible and I should just make it a Max Shrines challenge, but we don't go into runs with that mindset here. This all said, I had a great time trying to figure out all the strats and I particularly love this type of run where creativity is rewarded. Can you beat Pokemon Y if it's a randomized status only hardcore Nuzlocke? Nuzlocke's are nothing new in the Pokemon states, and a status-only Nuzlocke or few have certainly been done. However, I only found one hardcore status-only Nuzlocke and haven't seen one randomized. For those not familiar with Nuzlocking, basically it adds a lot of extra rules to a playthrough, restricting when and how many mons you can catch, and ruling that if one faints, it's permanently gone. The randomized aspect of this run added a ton of difficulty as not only could I not guarantee I'd get Pokemon with useful new status moves, but I also had no clue what each trainer I was about to fight had on their team. Generation 6 in particular had a good chunk of useful moves, but a lot of the TMs for them were locked until later bits of the game. Unlike the Legends Arceus run, simply grinding levels wasn't an option since the hardcore rules prevented me from getting above the next major trainer's max level. This one also caused me a nightmare or two knowing that I could wipe at the very end of the run. This coupled with me losing multiple important mods before hitting the Elite Four made the stress of the last segment drastically higher. Can you beat every dungeon in Tears of the Kingdom without abilities? If I'm being honest, when I first thought about this run, I only intended to do the main four dungeons and completely forgot about the Spirit Temple, but that was one of the first questions I was asked on stream. If I didn't do Spirit Temple, this run would certainly fall much lower on the list. I feel like a lot of the individual puzzles on this run were made easier since I could use a lot of solutions I had already known from the various All Shrines runs I've done. That said, in particular, the Octoballooning at Spirit Temple and Water Temple was a whole new level of torture I did not expect. To my knowledge, there's still no way to skip the scale arrow, but I'd love to find a way past this in the future. Even though some parts of this run were not particularly difficult, the ones that were are enough to land it this high on the list. Can you beat Pokemon Sword with only a why not, no Dynamaxing, and without battle items? Normally, I'm not fond of doing single Pokemon runs, but why not is a bit special. Not being able to deal direct damage brings up a lot of issues, and before I started the run, I actually wasn't sure if Counter or Mirror Coat would work against Dynamax moves. However, the real kicker of this run was not being able to use battle items. These alone would have trivialized the run as I could have healed in battle. Without healing, every battle became a matter of figuring out a counter to every move and how to preserve as much health as possible. I had to deal with Why Not's weakness constantly since Team Yell used Dark Pokemon and ran into multiple scenarios where I just wasn't sure if they were possible at first. The fact that I had to break out Pokemon Showdown and simulate battles in order to find a solution where I could live with single digit HP should state enough about the difficulty here. Can you beat every shrine in Breath of the Wild without the Sheikah Slate? This is the oldest public video on my channel and man did it catch more attention than my other videos. Just getting out of the starting shrine of resurrection requires some warping and permanently has effects on the save file. During this run I had to create a guide for almost every shrine and I ran most of these in advance before I showcased them on stream. But not all shrines were created equal and some of them like Dakatus and Totosa I'm particularly proud of. While most shrines mostly required creativity to solve, there certainly were some that did become difficult despite the game rewarding creativity. What addendum to the last five shrines? I know there was some new tech found for shrine coordinate warping, and I do suspect it would allow you to get into these shrines. However, one key detail for the No Sheikah Slate run that isn't a part of No Runes is that the shrine doors are still closed. This doesn't mean it's impossible, but my statement about needing to go so fast that you despawn the shrine door still holds true. Still, I was extremely happy with what I accomplished and I still love seeing new ways to solve these shrines. Can you beat every shrine in Breath of the Wild without jumping or paragliding? The third All Shrines challenge on this list, but it was not created equally. Some of the individual shrines like Boshkala, Sharo Lud, and Rota Chiga are enough to beat out the other runs in my opinion. That said, I do think a chunk of shrines could have been made simpler by just using the bomb arrow glitch everywhere. However, I wanted to keep each solution as unique as possible. 
Another exception that makes this harder than the other All Shrines run is that no jumping and paragliding causes some issues with traversing the overworld and even making it to some shrines. Couple that knowledge with adding the Divine Beast and having to clear stuff like Vob Meadow without the glider, the difficulty in this one should be quite clear. Can you beat Remnant from the Ashes with only secondary weapons? A lot of the runs on this list so far have been primarily difficult due to routing. Remnant introduces a totally new difficult, which is Execution. I'm normally not as big a fan of just taking on runs that are difficult for difficulty's sake, but Remnant is a game that I have thoroughly enjoyed. While the name of the run does suggest it'll be difficult, in my opinion you can only truly understand how tough it is by trying it yourself. We spent a lot of time going back and forth on spreadsheets trying to optimize builds for various sections in order to bring a damage cap on bosses, and almost every boss we hit presented some new difficulty that we needed to overcome. This is a run I'm quite proud of, and despite how much pain retrying bosses like Clavager and Axillus for weeks on end was, I have a lot of pride in completing this one. Can you beat Kingdom Hearts 3 Limit Cut with only magic? This was a follow-up run of the base game, which was way higher up on this list, and they're in very different spots for a great reason. Unlike the base game, hitting level and stat cap does not make this easy, so there was no option to outlevel my way past a difficult section if needed. In my opinion, not being able to attack with a keyblade wasn't the major hindrance though. If you check the guides for these bosses, they always say to block. Without being able to block, I essentially had no strategies for each fight and had to completely create and find strats from scratch. And oh man, did these strats become difficult, especially when trying to manage MP, limited items, and limited health. The game even goes as far as punishing you for getting in too many attacks in quick succession. I'm sure a chunk of people skipped straight to Yozura to see if I beat him, but I think every member presented unique challenges and all of them would put this run high up on the difficulty list. Due to Yozura, I did debate rating this as the most difficult run, but there was one that was even harder. Can you beat Pokemon Stadium 2 except I'm weak round 1? Considering that round 1 is only the first half of the game and this makes the list over the nightmare that was magic only limit cut, this should give you a good idea of the difficulty. Every single step of this run provides a scenario that makes your heart sink as you're hit with a matchup that at first glance seems like it'll be the one to end the run. This is still to date the only challenge I have stopped midway through because it pushed my patience so much that I couldn't do it anymore. This is probably the only run on my channel that I would tell people to never do as the mental tax it induces is not worth the reward. Every instance of clearing a hurdle is only met with something that's even more difficult than the last. I'm no stranger to plotting Pokemon battles out or finding counter strategies, but this one really pushed my ability to come up with any potential wins. Considering how hard round 1 was, I doubt there's any chance that round 2 will ever see completion. I mean, no one's crazy enough to do it, right? So, what's going to be in Season 2 of Out of the Box? Well, I've got a lot of ideas for runs already and quite a few are in progress, but I'm always open for new ideas. I will say in the next year we'll probably see less All Shrine runs as I'd like to try some other things and maybe even visit some older stuff like Twilight Princess. Thank you to anyone who's watched any of the runs. Any view, comment, or like helps out the channel a lot more than you might imagine. And an extra special thanks to anyone who comes and sits through these live with me, and to those that help out when a run hits a seemingly impossible wall. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next Out of the Box Run.